Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your comments, your questions, the emails I'm getting. Um, it's just amazing to, to have this collaboration and it's global and it's just beautiful. I'm, I'm just hoping it keeps growing and I hope that I can keep giving you information that you really want to hear. Some comments came up regarding this whole therapeutic relationship um, that we have inside of a session. And some of the comments also came from families and parents who wanted to sort of understand what is this therapeutic relationship need to look like? What do I look for in a therapist when I am looking for a therapist for my child? So I thought that, okay, let me, let me spend a couple of moments to talk to you about this um, therapeutic essence that's inside of a session. And like many of you in my university years, thinking that the best thing I can do is to be an activity queen. The more activities I have in a session, the better I'm going to be as a therapist. If I can mobilize the bilateral integration here, if I can work on the partial control here, if I can work on another activity here so we can have what we call projected action sequences, I'm doing a really great job as a therapist. And then children came and I started realizing I have good plans nothing wrong with my plans but how do I get them to do it how do I help them see that the activities ideas I have for them is going to be good for them how can they not see the logic right well long journey over many years learning that therapeutic relationship is the biggest key to the entire scope of learning. Motor, social, emotional, academic, everywhere. Why? Because relationship is the first key between the, the parent and the baby in the beginning of life. In utero, in fact. The relationship of being formed. And relationships drive the intrinsic motivation of a child to do for you, to do with you. And when we are dealing with, with um, children and students who are struggling with developmental delay, struggling with some kind of a diagnosis, struggling to learn to read and to write, um, we are almost always faced with this question. How do I keep them motivated? How do I keep them in the game? How do I understand what the inner struggle is in order to bring forth to the table every single school day, every single day, I must put forward a performance demand or act on a performance demand that I don't feel capable of doing. So that essence in a sessions is a cool and very crucial piece. When we act as therapists, we act as in a place of, I have to, create an experience that the child will willfully want to repeat. And when they feel successful, we know they're going to do it again. Right? Um, so what, what matters then is not only the activity, but it is how I present that activity. Especially if I'm trying to figure out a way that I can get them to do those challenging tasks that they need to do in order to overcome whatever it is that the inner struggles may be. So I have to look at, okay, they're not going to easily do that. How do I use myself? What is it that I am bringing to the table? How authentic am I to that child? When that child comes into the room and they look at me, what do they see? Who do they see? What is my vibe? Is my vibe, we're going to do it today? Is my vibe, hey bud, what you got for me today? Anything you're going to give me today is going to be good enough for me. And then when I get them to settle and when I get them to relax in the session, then you see them automatically go towards things because there's an interest to be here. There's an interest to be with me as a therapist in the room. So we must harness intrinsic motivation. And intrinsic motivation comes from emotion, not from the activity. It's the interest in an activity through feeling a feeling that makes me interested, that makes me do it. 
And so when we look at helping a child to see that what we have is good for them, we have to go through that the emotional level experiences as a place of safety, a place of security. So we have to form a therapeutic alliance between us and the child. And so many therapists say to me, Maud, you know, we are on a time constraint. So we, we got to get to social skills. We got to get to handwriting. We got to get to speech. We got to get to executive functioning skills. And we only have X, Y sessions because the insurance only allows so many sessions and the school only gives 30 minutes a week or whatever the case may be. And what I'm going to challenge you with, if you spend the first three, four sessions simply on building the relationship with the child, you will get to your goals quicker. How do I know that? Years. Years. So what I've done in, in my program is that when I start working with a child, I almost always start working with the emotional system as well at the same time. And I'm saying almost, but it actually is always. So even though we may not always do um, like social emotional sessions, we will include the social emotional in every single session of therapy. And that is been a crucial place for us to get to the results faster than what we did in the past. You know, to spend time having a power struggle with a child over some activity that is necessary has become a total waste of energy. There comes a time when you're going to have to help to push them through it, but not when they're still in their foundational stages of easily dysregulating, avoiding, and wanting to withhold themselves from the activity even when we know they probably can do it. So we have to negotiate not only with a child about what we are going to do, but we have to negotiate our emotional vibe towards the child as we also negotiate his vibe with which he came in today. Because, you know, who knows how, how he slept last night? Who knows if he had an argument with mom on his way into the session? What is he bringing? What suitcase is traveling through the door with him? Because certainly all those past memories is coming with him. Focus on your collaboration with a child um, as a professional, also as a parent. It does not take away from your authority. Children always know you are the authority and they want to feel secure with you. It's an innate thing. You're not going to lose authority by negotiating what could be more comfortable for him right now to build the warm-up so we can get to the place where we need to be so that there could be a settling of the nervous system, a regulated please that can make them available. And this comes with trust. Many, many times I have consulted in school systems, which I love. I love having that, that view. And I have tremendous respect for educators. Huge. I'm so grateful I only have to work with one kid at a time. Oh my goodness. It's just not my purview. I like that one-on-one -on -one thing. Right? But I've also seen how I'm consulting on a specific case in the classroom. And then in the cases, of course, there's always some kind of a behavior piece that, that I'm there for in different shapes and forms, but essentially behavior. And then I can see from the back of the room how the anxiety is rising by the performance demand. And then the teacher, well-meaning, comes over and says, come on, bud, you're still on page one, right? Look at the others. They're already there, right? And they're saying it warm and they're saying it a good way. And um, But the child is like, I'm behind again. I'm behind. I'm always behind. And then it becomes an always. And then it becomes, I'm never going to get it. I'm not going to have hope. And then whoops, you have an escalation, right? It's it's not that anybody willfully wants to put anybody in that kind of a state. But it's understanding that the cues that the child gives you is going to help you to approach the way you need to approach in your own flexibility and your own adaptability to get the most of that child. And to, to look for cues that you may not have looked for before. One of the biggest things I ask parents to do um, in my own personal clients is to say to them, I want you to go home and pay for two weeks with your child. 
no homework, no nothing. Just play. 20 minutes a night, I want you to play, but you're not allowed to talk. And they're like, what? I said, yeah, your child can talk, but you're not allowed to talk. You you mine, you use your face, you use ooh la la or oops or whatever you want, but you're not allowed to use words. And it's amazing when the parents come back and they say, oh my goodness, Ma, I, I never knew my child, blah, 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 right? It's not a it's not a blame. It's natural. We all use language and words to communicate. But the signs of discontent, the signs of not being in the right arousal level, the signs of not being available, of not, not knowing, feeling anxious, is in the nonverbal. And we have to learn that language in order to get this trusting relationship. So we play. You know, luckily, I haven't had somebody tell me lately that play is not educational. Oh my goodness. I've got one shelf on my bookshelf that's completely playbooks and oodles of research how play is helpful for academics. Um, and the biggest thing about play is that it brings the arousal system to a good place. If I play out Cinderella, because that is exactly what the child is interested in, but I use Cinderella so that I can bring it towards to a place that I can work on praxis, that I can work on motor planning, that I can work on, um, maybe I can add a few words in language differently to work on language while we're doing Cinderella. When we are taking the child's interest to heart and we're playing their game, but we're adding the, the playful obstructions, the, the pieces in there that will naturally take them to what they should have done if they typically developed from the get-go. And yes, this is for older students too. I don't know anything about Minecraft or whatever new game is out there. Don't even know their names. But what I would do is that I will find out what is their interest. And it doesn't matter if I know or not. I have had sessions on Minecraft that has been incredible to believe. Because that's what the child was interested in. That's what they wanted to talk about. So I said, talk to me. Tell me about Minecraft. Um, so what are you saying is that... So I ask them about it, I get some idea, I tell them when I'm confused, helps to kind of extrapolate language more, and then I say to them, you know what, can you show me, can you show me, and then they start showing, they start telling me, well, so Ms. Maud, it's like this, right, and so I say, okay, well, can we use that corner of the room to do that, and that corner of the room to do that, ah, oh, now we're bringing in visual spatial, we're bringing in planning, we're bringing in construction, but I've built it from what the child is interested in, the teenager, the person I'm working with, at their age level. It doesn't matter. Intrinsic motivation is also there for you. You wouldn't be this part, this length into this talk if you weren't intrinsically motivated. Okay. So Daniel Siegel, his words, attunement. How do we attune to the clients we see? Parent, how do you attune to your child in what you see? He says attunement is the process of being present with and deeply knowing oneself and the other person. How deeply do we know the kids we treat? Is it just next, next, next? Or is there a knowing? A knowing that I have to start the session for this kid this way because that's his profile. And I have to meet him where he's at. And for this kid, I have to really be a little bit more mm, on this end. Oh, I know he's going to love this swing when he comes in. So I'm just going to put it up and make sure it's ready. And he can rock and roll when he moves in. She loves this tactile surface, so I will have that available for her during the session, right? So we have to know the child, and it's not just knowing their praxis profile or whatever your purview is in working with a child, the entire profile. Because every experience is an emotion, and every emotion carries the willingness to do it again. Kim Bartel, great OT from Canada, um, I was attending one of her courses, and this is her word. She says, putting your mind 
in the mind of the child in front of you. And so I've, I've used those words in many different ways, but those are her words. Um, who is that child? And where are they today when they enter my room? How do I meet them there? And how do I foster trust, safety, and security in order to make it work? Again, if you're a parent, I know that you can take this message also to the home. Educators, yes, you have many kids in your class, many, many, many children. And to attune to each one of them individually is not going to be easy. Again, total respect from me. But maybe one or two of the children needs a little bit more attunement, a little bit more knowing than what we are maybe showing at this time. Seek help in your classroom to help you to find those pieces that could be quick little nuggets for you to try. Maybe it's simply a little squeeze on the shoulder. Instead of saying, you're behind again, maybe a squeeze on the shoulder and says, right? That encouragement. It's not a reminder how behind you are, but it's an encouraging wink of the eye. A little squeeze on the shoulder that says you can do it, right? Maybe it's just that little piece. Maybe the kid is fidgeting in the classroom to a huge degree and it's aggravating the other kids in the class because they need movement so much. Maybe just pass them and drop a pen and ask them to pick it up. And when the head goes down, the vestibular system gets activated. A nice little rush into the semicircular canals. It's little tips and techniques like these that can help us to know the child and know how to, how to get them to be with you. If I ask in my trainings, I often ask the, the, the attendees, I say to them, can you think of some really, really, really positive moment back in your own school years, right? And then I would say to them, think about that. And then say, I bet it had something to do with the relationship that was enjoyed both ways. Relationship matters. Relationship sometimes is the therapy. Don't underestimate it. Until next time, take care.